Hello everyone, I'm Adam Steele from EVO and this is a video where I'm going to help you set your EVO 4, EVO 8 or EVO 16 up with your DAW. Today we're going to be covering Cubase. First things first, we're going to want to plug in our interface. If it's an EVO 4 or EVO 8, we're going to want to plug the USB-C connection straight into our Mac or PC. If we're using a Mac, it's likely going to be a USB-C to C cable. If it's a PC, it's likely to be a USB-C to A cable. Both work exactly the same, provide exactly the same sound quality. It just depends which end works with your machine. Next, we're going to look at drivers. Whilst it is true that many Macs and PCs will work to some extent with an Evo interface without any extra software, we highly recommend that you get the drivers from the EVO website. These will give you the best functionality, the most performance with your DAW, and the best overall experience. So head to evo.audio in your browser. So here we are at the evo.audio website, and we're going to go to the top to products, and select the audio interface from here that is exactly the one that you own. In my case here, it's the EVO 4. Head down the page a little bit and we will see a downloads tab. Give this a click. And we bring up a page with the documents, including the manuals if you want to read in detail, and also the drivers at the bottom of the page for Mac and Windows. Select the one that is relevant to you, get that downloaded and install that on your computer. And I'll see you back here shortly. Once the Evo app is installed on your computer, you will now have this running in the top right corner on Mac OS and in the bottom right on Windows with the letter E. If we give that a click, then we can click show Evo control or to show the mixer for the Evo 8 and Evo 16. The Evo control for the Evo 4 is a nice way to look at exactly the same features that are available on the front of the hardware. With the Evo 8 and 16, the Evo mixer will give you some more control over the more fine aspects that we will cover later on. Now that the drivers are installed, it's time to fire up our door. Let's open Cubase now. I'm going to be using Cubase LE AI Elements 12, which comes with the Arc Creative Hub, which is something that you will see when you first plug in your interface. Now that Cubase is open, we need to start a project before we do anything else. So we need to choose a location for that project. We can prompt for a project location. In this case, I'm going to use the default, which is in our users music folder. And I'm going to call this project Evo4 and hit create empty. There are templates you can use, but I'm showing you right from the beginning. So we're going to start with a blank project. Now that we have a project open, this is where we need to set some of the settings to make our Evo interface work properly. We're going to go into the studio menu at the top and go to studio setup. The first thing that comes up here is our audio system, which is very important to us. This is what chooses the Evo 4, Evo 8 or Evo 16 to be our main interface and to be the thing that our door revolves around. So we're going to choose our ACO driver. And in this case, I'm choosing Evo 4. It's going to ask, do I want to switch the ACO driver? And we do, so I'm going to click switch. After a short gap while it engages the interface, we're now locked into using the Evo 4. And so we can see some of the technical details here of input and output latency, which is something we should talk about now. Latency and buffer sizes can be important if you're going to be using this in such a way where you hear the audio come through Cubase and be processed as we would wish and hear that live in real time. With latency, less is generally better because it's less disorienting and feels better to the listener, but can also be quite demanding on the computer. Whereas if we're building a heavy mix with lots of channels, lots of tracks, we may be able to give the computer a bit of a rest and a bit more of a breathing space to do what it has to do without any pops or clicks by increasing the buffer size. Now, underneath where it says audio system, the next tab has changed to say Evo 4. And when we click this, it gives us a nice list down here of all the channels that we have as inputs and outputs, but it also has a button that says control panel. If we give this a quick click, this opens and gives us the core audio device settings, which gives us a choice of buffer size. 
Now, for me, I usually use 256 sample latency and buffer size. I find that's a nice balance between not having too much latency and letting the computer, whether it is a Mac or a PC, have time to do what it needs without any sort of processing problems. If you need this to be shorter, if you're working with a singer who's quite sensitive to this, then perhaps 128 or even 64 samples may be appropriate. And if you're mixing, maybe something even as large as 1024 might be the right choice. If you're having issues, try experimenting with this, see which one works best in your circumstance. Once that's set, then we can hit OK, and we can go into the next thing, which is the project settings. That's at the top here, so we go to project and project setup. The things that we need to change in here are our sample rate and our bit depth. Now sample rate may not be important depending on what you're doing, but if you work primarily with a CD release, for example, then 44.1 kilohertz is most likely the right choice for you. If you work mostly with film, then 48 kilohertz is going to be the right choice. Bit depth, I recommend setting this to 24 bit because that affects the quality of the recording we get from the Evo 4, which is a 24 bit interface. Once that's all set, we can then hit OK, and we can save our project before moving on. The first thing that I'm going to do to get sound is plug in a microphone. I'm going to plug this into input 1 on the EVO 4. This process is the same on the EVO 8 and EVO 16. I've plugged in this vocal microphone, and it needs two things. It needs power, and it needs gain. So what we're going to do is press the number 1, which selects channel 1, and then first thing I need for this is phantom power. So I'm now going to hit the 48V button for phantom power. And that means this microphone, given a couple of seconds, is now powered. The next thing it needs is gain. And we have two choices there. Either we can do that by hitting number one and then manually selecting the amount of gain that we need from the large knob on the front of the Evo interface, or we can use the smart gain feature. Check out smart gain in the manual and on some of the other videos here. Now that we have our microphone working and we can see the little white dots moving on the EVO interface, now we need to get that into Cubase. So we're going to right click in this big blank section here and it gives us choices to add different tracks. And we want an audio track. I'm going to click add audio track and then under configuration, because this is a single microphone, I'm going to make sure this is chosen to be mono and the audio outputs by default are stereo out, which is the main one and two. On an EVO 4, those are the outputs. On the EVO 8 and 16, those are outputs one and two, which by default will feed the headphones and will feed the monitor outputs. You can change those in the mixer software, but that's getting a little advanced. Let's hit add track here. And now we can see audio 01, and we're almost ready to record. But the next thing is we need to be able to hear it. And we have a couple of ways to do that, and it's worth talking about them both. If we want to hear this through Cubase, then we need to click the button next to the record on the track, which is monitor. That will light up yellow. Now we can do things on the left here with inserts, that's EQs, compressors, all that kind of thing. And we will hear that through Cubase. Alternatively, if we turn that off, we can go and see the Evo control and here we can see our microphone gain, but if we click on this little fader icon, we can do exactly the same on the Evo 4 interface itself by pressing the button that looks exactly the same as the faders on there. And then as we change the control on the Evo 4, you can see on the screen this white dot moving around, which is mirrored on the interface. So all the way to the right means the audio we're going to hear is only coming from Cubase. And all the way to the left, is audio we are only going to hear live from inputs one and two with near zero latency, which means this could be far more useful for certain musicians who need that near zero latency experience, but without any kind of processing. If it's all the way left though, you won't hear anything like backing tracks from Cubase. So likely you're going to want this to be somewhere in the middle, and then you can balance that as necessary. At this point, you may find you come across a strange artifact that I call ghosting, where you've got two voices happening at the same time, one with a near zero latency through the EVO 4, and a second copy coming through Cubase. This happens if the monitoring is turned on in Cubase, 
and the monitoring is set to be routed through the Evo control or the Evo mixer. In this case, we need to turn one of these off. So whichever one it is that you want to turn off if you need the effect or whether you need the zero latency, if it's in Cubase, we simply untick the speaker icon there, or if it's in the Evo control, then we need to make sure we're on the uh, monitor selection and make sure that's all the way to the right. This way, we don't get that weird doubling effect. And that's it. So if there's anything else that you'd like us to answer for you, please feel free to leave a comment down below in the comments section. Otherwise, if there's anything else you still need, feel free to talk to us at our support. Thanks everybody for watching. Good luck and have fun, and we'll see you soon.